Hoi, look out. What's up? My sister in song Amber Lawrence, welcome to the Sister in Song sessions. It's so good to see your face. Oh, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. You both look beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so do you. Okay, so let's get to some serious questions. Okay. What has been your experience as a female country music artist? What I've learned in lockdown is you don't need to rely on anything but your own fans. So it's I don't really worry about comparing the male, the female, any of that. If you make good music and... Um, you connect with your fans that's what's going to give you a career last yeah. year my my fans just kept on showing up for me online concerts t-shirts stubby coolers whatever it was and um so i think last year was a really great lesson for us all to learn you know just keep down that path that you're going and uh you will find your way when you look at your career so far what has given you and what continues to give you the most satisfaction, do you think? It's the small things. It's the little emails. It's the it's the picture drawn, at, you know, by a kid that's a picture of you playing guitar that their parents go to the trouble to send to you in the mail. It's it's even like my little boy requesting my songs at childcare and, and you know, those songs are come, they come back to me on the on the daily report. Today we sang Amber Lawrence's song Outrageous and I'm like <laughs> Oh my God, I What, not Big Mac truck? No, he goes for the, like, the high-end stuff. So, yeah, they're the little moments and um, that's just making a, a small impact through your music. And my husband says it to me all the time. I mean, he works in an office job and he loves his job. Um, he says, but you don't realise the impact your music has on people. And I say, like, I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I'm head down, bums up mm. all the time. He goes, you're so lucky. You you impact people. And, you know, you both do as well. And doesn't, and, and I think what's frustrating sometimes, you know, we often get these questions, you know, you might, um, you go to, you get a taxi and the taxi driver goes, oh, but you're famous. What I've heard of you. And you're like, well, just because you haven't heard of me or just because I'm not famous doesn't mean I'm not making music that matters. Would you say that that's what's most important to you in music is the connection that you make with other people? Well, yeah, it is. And I, but I guess like I enjoy performing. I do love performing. But I think that's because also you can see on faces in the audience that they're enjoying it. Like trying to get a response out of people to make them happy and make them feel something. I mean, there's so much else baggage that goes with music, you know, like, do we sell enough tickets? Have I made any money tonight? Am I going to write another good song? Like that all comes, but you know, someone comes up to you at the end of the show and goes, oh, that was so much fun. I'm like, yes, that's, that's my mission. <laughs> you are an absolute powerhouse amber and anyone who watches you live will know that watches <laughs> you on tiktok watches you oh, no, no. that you are yeah. but when was the moment that you realized music was going to be what you did like mm -hmm. when was your career that was a really gradual moment i was just like a hobbyist for a long time and then i was like a hobbyist with some drive and ambition and then i was like oh well, now I've got enough songs for an album. Okay, I'm going to do an album, but I'm still going to do this job over here. Um, and then that that was 2007, that album came out and it got nominated for two Golden Guitars. And oh, actually the decision was forced on me in a way. You know, I was working at Qantas in finance and they said to me, um, you know, we love what you do here at Qantas, but we know you've got this other passion. So which one do you want to do? And so that's when I, like, easy decision for me. It was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow music because if I don't do that now, I'll never do music. And I would have been one of those annoying people that um, anytime someone else is singing, I probably would have been in the audience going, I could do that. Could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like an ex-smoker, yeah. but the yeah. opposite or something. <laughs> so that's, you know, I think it's, it's so nice to know to not die wondering, you know. I mean, like yeah. when I was at the Olympics, I'm like, I could do that. 
I could oh, do- yeah, I could pole vault the heck out of that. When you were going through all that, when you, you know, had that thrust upon you as such, you know, being um, nominated for two golden guitars with your first yep. release. I mean, that, that's awesome in itself. I, you yeah. know, I hope you sometimes go back and recognise mm-hmm. that. But who is the artist you most wanted to be? I don't think I ever wanted to be any other artist, but I admired what achievements and and, the, and kind of the gigs they were doing. And, I, you know, it's easy to say it would have been Becky Cole, you know. I saw the, the crowds and the way she entertained and, and also, um, you know, the awards she would win for putting personal things into songs. So definitely, um, a, you know, an inspiration. And I, and I loved Melinda Schneider's, um, you know, story of my life as well. Oh, my gosh, what a song. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, they were the early influences of people that I went, I actually saw them as, you know, stars and then couldn't believe that they became my friends. <laughs> yeah, I understand that feeling completely. That is me sitting here right now. <laughs> you know, it's been a tough time for everyone recently in the music industry with loss of gigs and loss of income and I don't think I really need to say much about it, but... um. What gets you through, aside from, you know, forcing Ike to watch yours? <laughs> um, I guess I remember looking back once we went back to work last year after lockdown and we lost so much work last year. Once I went back to work, I, re- I realised that we had this opportunity in lockdown to just be slow, be lazy, something we never do, something we never have the opportunity to do. So that's actually what gets me through is just knowing that, look, yeah, it's a financially hard time at the moment. I, you know, I've got a husband that works. Government is providing some support. Okay, I'm not going to go forward this year. Let's see if I can not go backwards. But I don't want to, again, look back on this time and think, should have just chilled out once gigs come back i'll be in the car driving around australia again i'll be stressing about ticket sales i'll be doing all those things and going damn it i had i had a month off why didn't i appreciate it what does female friendship mean to you not necessarily musicians or industry folk it might be both but what does that in itself mean to you We've got some good friends that are not in the business, females, and we, you know, we're allowed to do a, a walk together, and it's good, you know, so we're allowed to do that. So catch up with some friends, and um, just I suppose, you know, I mean, I, I have male friends, but but your female friends are the ones that you can tell all the the juicy stories to, and the, you know, anything to do with, um, you know, oh, God, I snapped today. Oh, hang on, now I know why hormones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Things like that, or even the motherhood juggle, you know, like um, I can't, I know a three-year-old's really hard in lockdown, really hard. Um, but people who are trying to hold down a job and homeschooling, you know, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-olds, oh, my God, or 10-year-olds, whatever it is, that's really hard. And the statistics have shown that the majority of that pressure is falling on the women. And it's falling on me in our family because, you know, Marty's got a new job and he's up in the front room and, and so, you know, I'm basically 14 hours for the day trying to work and be a mother. Um, so you are tearing your hair out. So I think that's really nice to share with um, other women. Um, yeah, I mean, female friendships are, are the greatest. And my sister and my sister-in-law are also my best friends too. So, you know, it's just I think the hardest thing is I'm just constantly on this phone texting people all day. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, like, you know, one of my good friends is Anna Georgia and she's a great singer. We love um, Anna. We message each other constantly throughout the day, but we use every different platform possible. So we, me- we message each other on WhatsApp, via text, on Instagram, on Facebook and TikTok, and we're like, which one are we? <laughs> We've really got to pick up our game, Logs. We're not doing, <laughs> well, we're not doing WhatsApp and, and TikTok. Who do you see as your sisters in song? Look, and I will say this honestly, Lynn, I do consider you one of mine. Thank you because Thank you. we've just written two songs um, together in one day yeah. and they've both been recorded for the new album. But the greatest thing about that day writing with you, Lynn, was that um, you just, like, proved what an incredible writer but incredible co-writer you are because you listened to me 
and said, I know what kind of song you want, not what kind of song I want. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah. talking reverse here, but. <laughs> no, but that I, I think that's what a good co-writer does. I've learned that from yeah my great co-writers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, women that I've written with and men, of course, too. But I think that's it, isn't it? It's just listening to one another. Oh, absolutely. And um, I'm just, I absolutely adore the two songs that we've written. Um, but you were my first mentor in country music. So, you know. Which blows me away. I still every now and then go, oh, that's right. <laughs> Amber was in my group. I was a group leader. I didn't know what I was doing. Yes, you did. You did have... I? Do you oh, think? I was, so... I was combusting. No, no, no. I was so nervous around you. Oh, my God. I was this tiny little shy thing um, that, you know, I remember we drove somewhere in your car and like, you know, I was, you were just normal, but I was doing the awkward conversation because I was so nervous. I was normal. Yeah, yeah, as normal as you I'm going to use that in a quote. Well, yeah. Amber Lawrence says, Lynn is normal. So Lynn, <laughs> yes, you are in My Sister of Song. Um, uh, obviously, I've toured so much with Catherine Britt and we've released a song together. Um, Anna Georgia is one of my close friends um sister in song of course we've got elise simmons diana corcoran who are very dear friends of mine and kirstie lee acres who we won that golden guitar with and we had a whole exciting um you know program of releasing that song out of nowhere yeah. last year which brought us close together after touring together in 2008 so many, like, I mean, the McClymonts were my sisters in song back early in the day when they took me on the road with them and um, speak on the phone regularly with Jane Denham and Hayley Jensen and just really feel lucky to have a lot of friends. Ashley Dallas in, in this industry. Corner. Hey, yeah. um, talking about all those beautiful women, are, are there any female artists that you'd like to mention to our um, audience? Uh, that they should be listening um, to. I've invited Cass Hopetown and Hayley Marston to sing a little harmony, gang vocal, as we call it, on, on my album, um, on a song that's uh, called Angry. So it's about happiness. Um, so they're two artists that are, I love what they're doing. They're just being unique and strong. Every single chick out there is doing something unique and it's um, cool. incredible. Would you be so kind as to sing us a verse and a chorus of something. Maybe bring yes. it back if you're in the mood yes. or... My guitar's just there. Have you got two seconds for me to get it? Yeah, duh. I'll edit this bit out. I'll edit it out. This is where we find out you're wearing your Jimmy Jams on the bottom. Alrighty, here we go. I can hear it calling in the air tonight Feel the rhythm hits me then it takes me high how we've been waiting for so long for the band to play our song come on bring it back we've been told to just hang on and if the fame and love is gone come on bring it back bring it Are you Amber Lawrence? I gotta tell you, the mornings, a couple of mornings recently that I've been a bit sluggish. I know it's hard to believe, but a um, bit sluggish in the mornings, like oh. then I've got, we've been waiting for so long, and I'm making my coffee going, yeah. And it's, seriously, it's 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 in it's in my head, and and your songs oh do God. that, and I know that that song is connecting with people, which you know you want to do, and yeah, thank you for connecting with us. Oh, thank you. I love the way you sang it. Where am I? Where? Oh, I love it. Oh, what a joy! Thanks, Amber Lawrence. Bye.